All right. Hey, everybody. We're going to continue on with the tutorial. In the last video, we uh, rendered a tree to the screen. So what I did is I've removed the tree because we're going to get going with the entity manager. So we're going to do that right now. So inside of the entities package, we created a new module called entity manager. So inside of here, we're just going to define a new module. We're going to just take class for now passing in class oops like so all right so now we can say entity manager is equal to class dot extend we're gonna have our initializer which is gonna take a handler and we'll take a player So we'll create some private variables up here. So first will be handler and then player. So we can set handler equal to the passed in handler and player is going to be equal to the passed in player. And we'll also have entities up here. These will be a list of entities. So from here we can have a tick passing in delta time. And we can have a render passing in the graphics object. Okay, and we're also going to have uh, some getters and setters. One will be get player. That'll be a function that returns player. We can say get handler. And we can say get entities. Oops, that was entities like so. And we need to make sure we have our commas. And then setters will just set. We'll say add entity. And that'll take an entity to put in. And we'll just say entities dot push e. All right, so what we've what we're doing right now is just basically uh, creating a class to manage all of the different entities that we'll put on the screen whether it's a rock or a tree or a player or an enemy this will manage them all so at the moment we don't have anything in our entities uh, entities array so we will actually set it entities equal to a new array and I'm just gonna put player in here so player is going to be added right away. Now we can do for var i is equal to zero, i is less than entities dot length, and then i plus plus. We're just going to say var e is equal to entities at index of i, and then e dot tick passing in delta time. So we're going to tick all of them. So we just loop. We're just looping through that. We're going to do something similar here, we're, but it's instead going to be a little bit different. So we're going to say entities dot for each. It's a function. Oops, function. We're going to use e, and then we can just say e dot render passing in g. So we did this a little bit e uh, a little bit shorter way. Um, this is just kind of a shorthand for each um, for each entity as e. So we're just saying that we can refer reference every entity within the array as e. Now we're not doing it up here. Um, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently, I guess, up here, following along with code and more. Um, but down here, we're just going to run it as so. So one thing, let's just 
let's just get going with this right now and then I'm actually going to get sorting um, render sorting going right away so the next thing that we need to do is we're gonna go into our world and we're gonna remove or sorry not our world our states in our game state we're gonna remove any code about the player in the game state right here we don't want any player ticking anything like that and we don't even want to put the player in here we're going to remove player altogether and player player is going to be moved out of this class altogether and remove that we'll remove tile out of here we shouldn't need tile in here oops and we'll keep world there we go these are the only things I think we'll need in here is just the world and the state uh, let me double check yep so now we'll actually go into our world I'll make sure this is saved and in here we are going to come up before we load the world and we're going to say uh, actually let's import our entity class so our entity manager I mean like so and now we'll just come right up here and say this dot entity manager is equal to a new entity manager and we're going to pass in the handler and we're also going to pass in a new player and he's going to need the handler and an X and Y position so let's see now I think that it won't really matter but we'll just put 100 by 100 there and the reason why I don't think that's gonna matter is because we're gonna say this dot entity manager dot get player dot set X we're gonna pass in this dot spawn X and we're gonna do the same thing for spawn Y so we're gonna set it based on what the world file is so we specify that uh, in our actual world um, asset or uh, resource so in the world we put two zero here we could say three five and save that uh, I've just played around with the map if you guys were using the same one as me um, I've changed it just doing some other stuff so that is different um, so we've added the player we've we uh, now we need to tick and render so in our tick we will say this dot entity manager dot tick passing in delta time and underneath everything in the render we will just say this dot entity manager dot render passing in G so if everything is correct we should now still be working so we will come back here refresh and oh we need to do one thing that I forget for sure we need to come into our app.js right under entity and put in entity manager and that's app slash classes slash entities slash entity manager 
All right, let's see if there's any other problems. Oh, player is not defined. We may actually, oh, right, we're going to need to import that into our world class now. So we'll just come right after the entity manager and grab add player to the package list. See if we have more errors. Entity manager, entity manager, entity manager. We need to come down to our bottom of our entity manager here and return entity manager. There we are. So we're back to normal. We're back to where we were, but now we can come into our uh, world class here and we could come right underneath uh, where we create the entity manager. We can add an entity. We could pass in a new tree, which takes a handler an X and a Y. Just need to import that. So come up to the top, we can say tree and tree here. And that quick we've got a tree. Now the one problem that we can see here is our tree is always on top, so that's not good. I'm gonna create another tree we're going to put it at 200, 500, 300, 700. We'll just move these around. Let's see. And <clears throat> let's do one more that's at 200. OK. And let's move it back at four fifty. All right, this will be good. So we can see that our trees are on top of the player, and even this one tree is on top of the other tree, and that just doesn't look good. So one thing that we can do is we can come into our entity manager at the very bottom before we return we can create a function called compare and it's going to take an A and a B and inside of here we can say if A dot get Y is less than A dot get or B dot get Y then we'll return negative one and else we'll just return one. So this right here is just a sorting function that checks their y position to see which one's less and if if a is less than one uh, it returns negative one and that is just the the returns are what the sort function expects um, when sorting the array. So up in the top in the tick here I'll just say entities.sort passing in compare so let's see what happens here if we do this. So as you can see, he gets pushed to the top. I mean, but, but the only problem is, is it's happening in a really weird position. Now these trees also fix themselves as well. But if I can tell you, if we move that tree down just a little bit, it won't be fixed. So if we take that 450, make it for, let's say 80, Let's see what happens. Eh. Well, that that's not looking too bad. But what we can do, we'll put this back to 450. What we can do to fix the problem with the sorting so that it's actually sorting at the right spot is if we come down to our compare and we just add to each a dot get height and then add to it b dot get height 
And what this is going to do is it's going to push that down to the bottom of the entity. No matter what the size is, it will be at the bottom of the entity. And so when it sorts it, it'll be based on the bottom. So you can see here our player is still behind the tree, and now he's in front of the tree. Now he's behind. And this in conjunction with um, collision detection will make it so that you're either behind the tree or you're in front of the tree or you're colliding with the tree. So, I think this is enough for this tutorial right here. In the next tutorial, we will um, add more trees and uh, maybe we'll work a bit on collision detection. Uh, so, I hope to see you guys there in the next tutorial.